This problem deals with vertical motion of a free-falling object. If an arrow is shot upward from the top of a 640-foot building with an initial velocity of 48 feet per second, we're going to state the arrow's position function, the velocity function, the acceleration function. We'll find the average velocity of the arrow between two and five seconds, the instantaneous velocity at exactly five seconds, the acceleration at that same moment, five seconds. We'll figure out how high the arrow goes and determine the arrow's velocity when it hits the ground. Part A of this problem is asking us to find the arrow's position function. The position function of a free falling object under the effects of gravity takes the form s of t equals the position of the function at any time t is equal to negative 16 t squared. The coefficient of negative 16 will be constant for any object that's falling under the influence of gravity where the force from gravity is measured in feet per second squared plus the initial position times t, or I'm sorry, the initial velocity times t. And in this situation, the initial velocity was positive 48 feet per second. That's positive because the arrow is moving up. It's shot upward with an initial velocity. If the arrow was shot down, this term would be minus 48t. And the final term in the position function is the initial position, which in this case is 640. The position function for this arrow at any point in time is given by negative 16t squared plus 48t plus 640. The second part of this problem is asking us to state the velocity function. The velocity function will allow us to state the instantaneous velocity of this arrow at any point in time as it travels towards the ground. The velocity function is the derivative of the position. The position function we found in part A to be s of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 48 t plus 640. A derivative is a rate of change, and the rate of change of an object's position as time passes is the object's velocity. The derivative of a position function is a velocity function. We can find the derivative of negative 16 t plus 48 t plus 640 very easily by applying the power rule for differentiation to each term. The derivative of negative 16 t squared is negative 32 t, and the derivative of 48 t is 48. By differentiating the position function, we have a function called the velocity function, v of t equals negative 32 t plus 48 in this case, which will again tell us the velocity of this arrow at any point in time in feet per second. Part C is asking us for an acceleration function. An ex the acceleration function is based on the position and the velocity functions that we found in parts A and B. We started in part A with the position function of negative 16t squared plus 48t plus 640. We found the velocity function to be the derivative of the position, negative 32t plus 48. And the acceleration function, well, Acceleration is a change in velocity with respect to time, so we can find the acceleration by differentiating the velocity. The derivative of negative 32t plus 48 is negative 32. The acceleration of this arrow is constant. It's basically only the effect of gravity. Part D, we will be finding the average velocity of the arrow between two and five seconds. Average velocity does not require calculus. Average velocity is simply the change in position of an object over the change in time. For example, if I traveled 100 miles in two hours, my average velocity is 100 miles in two hours or 50 miles per hour. My average velocity was 50 miles per hour. That does not mean I traveled 50 miles for that entire trip, but that was my average velocity. To find the average velocity of this arrow, and specifically when computing the change in position, we're going to need to use the position function, which is negative 16 t squared plus 48 t plus 640. And the change in position between two and five seconds will be evaluated by computing s of five minus s of two. s of five will tell us how high the arrow is after five seconds. s of two tells us how high 
high the arrow is after uh, two seconds. If we take that difference, that, that it will be the change in position between two and five seconds. The change in time, much easier. The change in time between five seconds and two seconds is three seconds. S of five is evaluated by taking negative 16 times five squared plus 48 times five plus 640. That is 480. S of 2, negative 16 times 2 squared plus 48 times 2 plus 640 is equal to 672. 480 and 672 have a difference of negative 192, which, when divided by 3, is negative 64 feet per second. The average velocity between 5 seconds and 2 seconds is negative 64 feet per second. Does not mean that the arrow is traveling at that speed, for, at that velocity for the entire time between 2 and 5 seconds. It will, at least for an instant, travel at negative 64 feet per second between 2 and 5 seconds, but that is only the average. Instantaneous velocity is far easier to compute than average velocity given that you've done the calculus ahead of time. We found in part b of this example that the velocity function v of t was equal to negative 32t plus 48. And this function will tell us the instantaneous velocity of the arrow at any point in time. If we were to graph the arrow being shot off the building, going up and falling back down, at t equals 5 seconds, the slope of the tangent to the graph whenever t is equal to 5 is what is being evaluated by v of t and in this context that is equal to the velocity of the arrow. The instantaneous velocity at 5 seconds, the velocity of this arrow at the instant that occurs exactly 5 seconds after it is shot upward can be found by evaluating v of 5, negative 32 times 5 plus 48 which is equal to negative 112 feet per second. Negative 112 feet per second. This value is negative because the arrow is moving down at this point. It's moving down at a rate of negative 112 feet per second. When we found the acceleration function in part C of this problem, it turned out to be a constant. And that will be the case for any object that is free falling. It's not under any other force other than gravity. We found the acceleration function a of t to be equal to negative 32. That means that for the entire time this arrow is traveling through the air, through the air, its acceleration will be negative 32 feet per second squared, including at 5 seconds. The arrow's acceleration at 5 seconds, negative 32 feet per second squared. To determine how high the arrow goes, we have to realize that when the arrow is initially shot upward, it travels, it travels up with a positive velocity. It reaches its highest point and then begins to travel down with a negative velocity. But for an instant, when the arrow reaches its highest point, the velocity is zero. And that is what we're going to use to figure out how high the arrow goes. Because if we set the velocity equal to 0, if we set the velocity function, negative 32t plus 48 equal to 0, and solve for t, we'll have a value of t, a time, a number of seconds after the launch of the arrow, where, where the arrow has reached its highest point. Then, using that time, we can plug that into the position function to determine how high the arrow goes. Setting the velocity, negative 32t plus 48 equal to 0, we find that t is equal to negative 48 divided by negative 32, which is equal to 1.5 seconds. This is telling us that after 1.5 seconds from the time the arrow is, is launched, it will have reached its highest point. And it will only be at that highest point for just an instant, but we can evaluate how high it is at that instant 
by substituting 1.5 into the position function. Evaluating s of 1.5, negative 16 times 1.5 squared plus 48 times 1.5 plus 640, we find that this arrow reaches a height of 676 feet. The final part of this problem is asking us to determine the arrow's velocity when it impacts the ground. As we discussed in part G of this problem, when the arrow is initially launched, it travels up with a positive velocity, reaches its highest point where for an instant the velocity is zero, and then begins to fall with its velocity increasing along the way. To determine the arrow's velocity when it impacts the ground, we first have to find when it hits the ground. At what time does it hit the ground? AKA, when is its position, when is the position of the arrow, zero? So we're going to set the position function equal to zero. This will tell us, that we'll solve for t, and it will tell us the time, the number of seconds that has passed, until the position is zero, AKA, until the arrow hits the ground. The position function is a quadratic, which means that it will yield two answers, two values for t, However, only one of them will be in our domain. This is a quadratic, and it can be solved with a quadratic formula, but 16, 48, and 64 are all divisible by 16. So the problem will be much easier to solve if we factor a 16 out to the front. And because of the possibility that this may factor, it will be easier to factor, in my opinion, if we factor negative 16 out to the front. And that yields t negative 16 times the quantity of t squared minus 3t minus 40. Studying this quadratic, you should recognize that it does in fact factor. t squared minus 3t minus 40 factors to t minus 8 times t plus 5. The 16 that was factored out to the front in the previous step uh, does not affect the solutions. We can think of uh, the Think of it as dividing both sides by negative 16 and 0 divided by negative 16 is still 0. The factorization of t minus 8 and t plus 5 as the two factors will each be set equal to 0. And we find that t equals 8 and t equals negative 5 when the position of the arrow is 0. t equals negative 5 is not in the domain. This problem starts when t equals 0 and it hits the ground when t equals 8 eight seconds pass before the arrow hits the ground. This problem is asking what is the velocity at that time? What is the velocity after eight seconds? So we can evaluate V of eight. Our velocity function V of T was equal to negative 32 T plus 48. So V of eight will be negative 32 times eight plus 48, which gives us a value of negative 208 feet per second. When the arrow impacts the ground, it is traveling at a velocity of negative 208 feet per second.